All right, let's talk about range testing. So I mentioned we're going to talk about um, a couple of different range types or a couple of different range testing types. So I really see this as there's three types of range testing. There's the certified test. This is the one that the EPA or the governing body is going to do. This is the test to tell us, here's your range. This is what we approve. Um, here's your efficiency. This is what we approve. And this is what's going to allow us to accurately compare one vehicle to another. This is going to give us those controlled conditions so that we do know we're comparing apples to apples. And this is that value that can be put on the window sticker. This is the thing we can market. This is what we can come out and advertise. This is what consumers can make educated decisions on. So that's our certified test. This is, this is the one the government does. Now we just don't hand the keys over to the government. Um, we want to understand what our range is before we test. And we want to make that range as long as possible with the components we've chosen. So we're going to run the engineering range test. And we're going to do this in-house or we're going to do it at a um, test house that might have the facilities. And these are going to be a little more complicated. In the EPA test or the certified test, all we care about is battery energy. But in the engineering test, we want to know how each component uses energy. We want to understand the effects of each subsystem. We want to look at those vehicle level control issues and we want to understand vehicle level loss patterns. What does this mean? A vehicle just doesn't have one motor. It might have four wheel motors, two axle motors, heating, air conditioning, auxiliary, heated seats, you know, all this stuff we enjoy, cooling pumps. And we want to understand how each of those interact so that we can make changes to the vehicle level control and maximize that range for a given component. Or if a component is really terrible, we might want to change that component or update a control or, or do these individual component tests to understand how they use energy. This is details. This is details at the vehicle level. Lastly, because we're making decisions on components, whether we want to change them, we want to update our control schemes, we want to find a new supplier, we're also going to do component level range tests. And these are a little different because they're a lot more detailed, but we're going to look to improve the losses of components. Maybe we change when we turn on a cooling pump. Maybe we change out a um, heating unit. Maybe we update the inverter control for our propulsion motors. But the point is to really understand at the component level, how the losses happen and how we can make changes to update them. So these are the background. So let's, let's look at some of the details. All right, the certified range test. Remember, this is the one the government does. All right, what do we do? Well, we need to characterize the vehicle rolling resistance. So we're going to take this vehicle out. We're going to spin it up to a certain speed and we're going to put it in neutral and coast down. And we're going to see how the friction of the vehicle, how the air resistance of the vehicle affects it. This is really the, um, you know, rolling resistance. So we're going to characterize that. That's what's going to give us this real world ability to characterize this vehicle's range. We're going to instrument the vehicle DC bus. And we're, if you've got one battery, we're going to measure one um, voltage and current and therefore one energy. If you have two batteries, we have to measure both. But we're looking at how much energy the vehicle is using. We don't care about the components. We just want that vehicle level. How much energy do we use? How far did we go? This is how efficient we are. This is our range. So we're looking at that efficiency and range. But we're measuring that DC bus value. We're going to run the vehicle through a number of drive cycles from full to empty. And how are we going to do those drive cycles? Well, we went over what the drive cycles are. We're going to take our car, like the car we have here, and we're going to put it on a chassis dynamometer. And we can see that we have this little rolling road here. This is basically a treadmill for cars. So each tire has a little rolling road, and we're going to run the vehicle through um, these drive cycles from full to empty. And this little dyno, this is going to take into account that rolling resistance. This is going to take into account that vehicle dynamics and we're going to characterize this vehicle's efficiency and range over these number of drive cycles. So we put a car on a, on a chassis dynamometer or treadmill, and we run it through those drive cycles from full to empty. 
We record the range, we record the energy usage. And we're gonna execute this test several times because we want a good average. So we're gonna run it a handful of times, different governing bodies use different number of, of runs. And also, depending on what part of the world you're in, you're also going to run a hot and a cold test. So there's environmental factors as well. But again, we're looking at that total energy used to get efficiency and then the range. And that's what we're doing. And then we get that sticker and that tells us how far we can go. So that's a certified range test. One measure or one voltage, one current, one energy. Now these things get a little more complicated when we get to the engineering level. Because if we look at my little animation on the side here, you know, we have DC DC converters, we have ancillary loads, which could be, you know, heating, cooling, auxiliary systems. Um, all these other things, these creature comforts we enjoy, cooling pumps, propulsion. We want to understand how each component uses energy. We want to understand the DC power of each component. And when we start looking at these not, uh, new vehicles, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to have multiple motors, front and rear axle, four wheel motors. Um, in heavy trucks, we're seeing all kinds of motors, heating, cooling systems, infotainment. These are all going to have DC measurements. And it's not uncommon to see, you know, 10 to 20 different power sinks. But we need an instrument. So that's 10 to 20 DC powers. <clears throat> so this is a lot of measurements we're potentially looking at. <clears throat> oh, man. We're going to run that exact same test we ran in the certification test just with all these measurements. Okay, same test, car, chassis, dyno, energy measurements, a lot more energy measurements. Because we have these many measurements, we have many configurations. This can create some challenges because we not only need to get an instrumentation into the vehicle, but we need to have a, a sanity check and we need to have all these systems coming into one location and some visualizations to know what's what. And sometimes we need to do some clever math to how does the front half of the vehicle operate? How does the rear half of the vehicle operate? We're going to record data throughout these tests and record the whole data file. Um, and this is going to allow us to um, make decisions and, and control changes. We want to understand that while we accelerate, maybe we want to turn one system on and turn one system off to preserve efficiency. And we, we're going to want to have data be able to make decisions on these different topics. You know, if we want to change a component, if we want to update a control, we need to have data throughout this whole test for all of these components to make these educated decisions. And this is, once we've instrumented all these sources, once we're recording data on all these sources and running it through these drive cycles, we're really going to understand that vehicle energy flow so we can manage it and make decisions to change components, update components. Um, so this is a really powerful test when it comes to taking a vehicle and making it as good as possible. Okay, so now we understand the engineering range test. We're doing the same test as the certification, just with a lot more measurements, a lot more data recording, and we're making engineering decisions based on this information. Lastly is the component level test. Once we've identified that a component might use a significant amount of energy, we're going to want to make component level changes. So what are we going to do? Now we're maybe not going to be on the chassis dynamometer, but we're going to be on a direct drive dynamometer that has precision instrumentation for torque, speed, um, voltage, current, electrical energy consumption. We're going to look at these details now. We're not just looking at DC, we're looking at AC as well. But on this um, direct drive dynamometer, we're going to run the same test profile. And we're going to make detailed measurements on all channels, and this could be AC, fork, speed, temp. And we're going to look at all these different measurements, and we're going to do a really detailed analysis. And we're going to figure out how to improve that component efficiency and how to improve that range. And we're going to take into account things like dynamic losses of components. We're going to look at, you know, if we're looking at a motor, copper loss, 
iron laws. All of these different things. So we can start to make decisions on how to better operate these machines. But again, we're running that same speed profile versus time. We're just taking even more measurements and even more precise measurements. So at the end of the day, we're running the exact same test. We're just now doing it with more detail so we can understand these individual components and, and make those changes to improve our vehicle level range. It's a really powerful process if you think about it, going from certification level down to component level and running the same test at each point. 